So let's start off this course by taking a look at the sequencer. We're going to start from scratch, so I'll open this preset browser, select template here, and choose the blank synth preset. Let's close the browser, and now let's set up a simple voice. I'll take the pulse out from this oscillator, plug it into the filter, take the filter output, and plug that into the VCA input here. Let's hear this. I'll make sure the sustain is all the way up on the VCA. Open up that cutoff. Now let's scroll down to the sequencer. So how does this sequencer work? You can see there are three lanes of dials over here, each dial representing the voltage value of a step. So you can think of it as three independent eight-step sequencers but it can actually do much more than that. Let's set up a simple example. So let's say I want the pitch of this oscillator to be controlled by the sequencer. So right next to this keyboard control, you can select which sequencer will control this oscillator. So when I click and drag here, I see the different sequences, but it actually goes up to four. There are three lanes, but the fourth lane is actually a chain mode where you can combine all the three lanes together as one. Let's just use S1 for now. So now we're just using this first lane. Let's set up the different CVs. And if you notice in the bottom left corner, as I click and drag, you can see the actual notes. So I'm just randomly picking different values here. All right, so if I play right now, you'll hear that the sequencer is not running. The first step LED lights up, but it doesn't move. Now the sequencer has a sequencer trigger on option over here. And I can click here and choose what will trigger it. So by default, it's already set to keyboard trigger on. There's a sequencer off option as well, and that's set to keyboard trigger off. And you can also manually trigger these options by just clicking on the button right below. Now the reason why it seems like the sequencer is not running is because the rate of the sequencer is very, very low. So when I crank up this frequency value, now you can see it move. So we can manually turn on and off the sequencer or use the trigger input, which we've already set up. So if I hold down a note, we now hear the sequence running. And of course, in real time, we can change up some of the parameters. Now this frequency control can be MIDI synced. So now when I change this value, you can see subdivisions of your master tempo. I'll turn it back off. So now it's free running. Now instead of actually controlling this with the keyboard, we have some other options. Let's just turn this off and I'll disable this trigger option. You can also have a next step trigger with this control. So I can pick from any of these trigger options to trigger the next step. So let's try it with the keyboard trigger. So now every time I play a note, the sequencer will advance to the next step. So like this, you can manually control the rate of the sequencer. All right, let's disable that and, and turn this back to keyboard trigger on. Now you also have a manual real-time control for each step over here. So while the sequence is running, I can just hit any of these LEDs and trigger the sequence from that particular step. And for each of those steps, you can also have an external trigger option. So very extensive control there you get for the sequencer. All right, so that was a quick introduction to using the step sequencer. In the next video, we'll check out how to make use of the other lanes in the sequencer.